Let's dive right into building a ruined jungle spire. I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. And a first step here is going to make this fail 3D print. You can see the infill lines all in there. I'm going to make this look a little bit more gnarly. And for that, I'm going to be using some Citadel plastic cutters to break off bits and pieces of it near the top of the piece. So this particular piece is actually from my Judgment of Osiris starter set. And you can find a link to that on my Etsy store down in the description of this video. So we made the top look a little bit more ruined. Now I need to fill this all in because of course you can see the infill and we don't really want to have that look to this piece. At this point I'm going to borrow a technique from the cosplay world. I've got some scrap pieces of warbler over here. This is a thermoplastic which means you heat it up you can kind of mold it into different shapes. And this particular material is very common when building battle armor for cosplay. But what I'm going to use it here is that it has the ability to glue to whatever you kind of attach it to. And I can kind of use it to fill in the top of this infill here and kind of give this top of the spire a bit of a nice smoother finish than it has right now. For Warbler, how it works, you can cut off small pieces of it using scissors. You heat it up with a heat gun. And then when it gets nice and hot, it's very pliable, and you can kind of mold it into these areas to fill in the top of this spire. I am going to add the note if you've never used Warbler before. There is a shiny side, and there is a non-shiny side. The shiny side has a little bit of glue on it. So this is the side that you want to attach to anything that you want to get a more pure or, or more permanent bond to. Because it does get really hot when you heat it up, it's not a bad idea to use a tool like a pair of pliers to hold it while you're heating it up. Alright, that is looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with it at this point. The next thing I need to do is to smooth out the warbler and make it line up with the actual 3D printed parts along the edge here. And that's just, well, some sandpaper. So I'm going to take some of the 80 grit sandpaper and then just kind of sand down the warbler until it is even with the PLA 3D printed material. The edges are all cleaned up pretty well. Now it's time to add a little bit more debris to this thing. That way it kind of make it look like it's more than just kind of a melted piece of plastic. You know, it looks, it'll give the idea more that some stones have fallen off, or some things have broken down, and the rest of the spire, who knows where it is now, but it's going to be a little bit of debris left around up here near the top. So take just a random sprue you have laying around and chop off maybe about a dozen tiny little pieces, and then clean off each of the pieces so they don't have all the little bits of things sticking off them. The little tabs that held on the miniature and things like that. I'm going to take some of these sprue pieces now and I'm going to glue them up here in the top of the piece using some super glue. So maybe put three to six of them up here. For the next step you're going to want some sort of modeling sand. I've got some Citadel branded sand here as well as some PVA glue. I'm going to take some of the glue, spread it out along the top here, and then put some of the sand on the glue. And then once it's painted, this will look like tiny little pebbles that have kind of broken off and eroded away from the original structure. To help sell the effect that this is an old spire that it fell down a long time ago and it's been slowly being reclaimed by nature, I want to build a base for it that makes it look like the ground is kind of starting to cover up the edges of the bottom of this spire. For that I have some 1 inch thick extruded polystyrene, this is green insulation foam, but if you have the pink brand that will work just as well. I'm going to start by putting the spire on the foam and then tracing around the spire with a pencil. Using a box cutter, carefully cut out this square I marked out in the extruded polystyrene. Then test fit the spire in the newly cut out hole. It's a little too deep but that's alright. I'm going to cut out a piece of foam around the spire that's going to eventually end up becoming the base. Now as I mentioned, this is a little bit too thick when I put the spire in here. So what I want to do is carefully cut it in half by the height. Time to take some more PVA glue. I'm going to wring the inside of the extruded polystyrene with the glue and then I'll put the spire in place. Not a perfect fit, so I'm going to take some more warbler scraps, heat them up, and place them in between the spire and the foam base. Be careful with this, do not hit the foam with a heat gun. It has a nice warning on it that says if it gets hot, it may spontaneously combust into fire. Now 
next step of the base is to make it slope down to the ground. So I'm going to bring back out the box cutter and then I'm going to cut at an angle all around the spire until I got what looks to basically be like a mound of dirt around the base of the spire. It's time to add some more debris around the base of the spire. Take some more of the little pieces of the sprue and we're going to glue them to the foam. Now be careful with super glue and extruded polystyrene. This super glue can sometimes, if not always, melt extruded polystyrene, so you might have to use some PVA glue for this step. As with the top here, we're going to apply some sand as well, so pour out some PVA glue, apply that to the foam, and then sprinkle some of the modeling sand on that glue. When it comes to painting and priming this terrain piece, the polystyrene foam doesn't like aerosol sprays. So things like the propellant that are in many primers, well that'll actually melt the foam. So we don't want to use that here. Instead, I'm going to be using some flat acrylic paint and primer. You can buy this from home improvement stores. I don't remember how much I paid for this can, but it's been around for a while. And it's just a base gray color. So let's go ahead and prime the miniature in this color. I have let this dry for a few minutes as I apply the glue and the sand on the base. Give the piece plenty of time to dry, then we'll move on to doing additional layers of paint. Time to move on to the next layer of paint. I'm going to be using a little bit of Dawnstone Gray from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints, as well as some Linen White from Reaper Master Series. I'm going to mix some of the white into the gray to get a little bit of a lighter color, and just kind of apply that as a little bit of a highlight, slash just a different color of gray on the structure. I'm going to do the same basic process, but now I'm going to mix in some black with the gray to give some darker shades, get a little more contrast, a little more interesting color going on with this terrain piece. Now comes the fun part. I'm going to be using some Citadel Nun Oil Shade. This is from Games Workshop's line of paints. I'm going to apply this all over this terrain piece to bring out a lot of the contrast. A shade, of course, gets captured in some of the crevices, like between the bricks in between all the little bits of sand and dirt and stuff that we put on the miniature, and that really brings out the detail. This is the non-gloss version. I'm gonna apply one more quick layer of paint. This time I'm gonna be using the Serapin's Appeal Wash from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints. And I'm gonna apply that to some of the bricks just to make it look there's a little bit of mud staining or dirt wear look to this particular piece of the terrain. We're going to move on to working on the base. For this step, I've got several different shades of flocking. I'm going to apply a whole lot of white glue to this bottom of the area of the base, what was the little bit of warbler as well as the polystyrene. Then I'm going to coat that glue using a mixture of, like I said, the several different colors of flocking that I have. Using my finger, I'm scraping off some of the flocking so that way we can get a little bit better look at some of the detail we placed down before we started painting the terrain piece. Now I want to make a few vines crawling up to the top of the spire. For that, I'm going to be using some super glue. Place a few drops running from the bottom of the terrain piece up to the top, and I'm going to be using some lichen to therefore create a, the effect of a growing, creeping vine. Be careful here, this is a great way to glue your fingers together. And because why not make this some sort of alien world, I'm going to take a plastic floral piece, which you can purchase from a lot of hobby stores, cut a few pieces off that, and make it look like there's a giant plant growing out of the base. Well, thank you all for watching this terrain building tutorial. Once again, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. To get more videos like this, like terrain construction, as well as miniature painting, be sure to go ahead and hit the subscribe button here on YouTube, and you'll get the latest videos when they come out. Currently, I'm publishing on a Sunday and Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time schedule. And also, if you want to check out the Judgment of Osiris 3D printed terrain kit that I have for sale on my Etsy store, you can go ahead and find that in the description of this video. So once again, I'm Jason. Thanks for watching.